Hey everyone, my name is Nick Shalom, the former Air Force and Space Force Chief Software Officer. I'm also the founder of Assage. Today in this video, we're going to do a, a small deep dive in how to train Assage with your enterprise data to ground it in truth and making sure that you limit hallucinations and make it more factual. We're going to do a simple example here. Take a look also at our videos with deep dives on real-time data to tap into your databases and APIs. And for now, what we're going to do is just take a, a simple document. But again, this could scale to hundreds. Uh, we will just show you effectively the different steps to follow to be able to leverage our plugins, but know also that we have APIs to do exactly the same work. So let's get started. All right, so in this example, we're gonna take a very simple document. Again, this could scale to hundreds of pages, but we're gonna take this uh, case study we've done on how we saved three year of backlog in a month using Assage to automate the extraction of medical record data uh, for veterans with uh, our partner, uh, Vets Guardian. Here, as you can see, we have a very short document, a couple of pages, and uh, let's take a look at uh, you know a few questions we could be asking. For example, we look at uh, uh, how long the medical backlog is, the average number of hours uh, to process each record, and uh, the average size of a medical record on average. Uh, that could be a good set of questions. And then we could also ask how many new hires it would have required to uh, automate or to uh, be able to tackle this this backlog here, uh, which would be 50 new hires. So uh, let's get started first with the ingest. All right, so the first step is to create a data set for this uh, work. Again, you know, you could ingest multiple files into the same data set, but if you put too much, that might confuse the bot. So always think about uh, cutting it into different uh, labels, different buckets of data, if you will, to be able to minimize that risk. So here we're going to create a data set. I'm going to call it um, Vets Guardian, and uh, that's how we do it. So slash add dash data set, and then you know, the name of your data set here. And that's created here, so that's done. Now I'm gonna select it here as well, um, just to be able to be able to do my search later, but that's not needed for the ingest. So uh, let's look at the different plugins. We have different options. Of course, we could ingest a plain test content and copy and paste it here. We could ingest the files. So we're gonna use the file content uh, plugin here, which has different steps we're gonna be looking at. And of course, we support so many different file types between PDF, Word, Excel, you name it. Uh, in this case, this is a Word document, but we also have it in Excel, in, uh, in, in PDF, but we'll start with the, 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 the Word version. So let's do that and select the uh, document. All right, so once you selected your document, the next step is to look at different uh, file reader options. By default, you can mostly uh, leave it in auto, but uh, we have a fast version, which really is not that needed. And then if you had a, a PDF, for example, that's scanned and it doesn't have the uh, text, uh, properly uh, in the PDF. You could OCR, right, do a recognition of the text uh, with OCR here. It's not perfect, but it, it, it does extract the text as well. The next step is to be able to enter a short uh, context to help the bot with some metadata here. We're gonna we're gonna say Assage a case study about Vets Guardian. The next one is the chunks of um, each cuts of the PDF to make sure it doesn't uh, go above the limit of the ingest data uh, model uh, token limit. So we often recommend to stick to 2000 so you don't have to change that. And then the next one is the uh, summarized prompt and you can most likely leave it as is unless you want to specifically extract some insight. For example, you could say from the document extract all mentions uh, or anything related to X, Y, and Z. So you could you could do more than summarization. You could also uh, extract specific content, which would be very helpful, right? Because that helps you uh, effectively get better insights in your training data and remove the waste. So if you have a bunch of things that are unrelated to what you want to ask questions about in a big uh, PDF documents, you could effectively use the summarization to extract the right insights and only focus on that and train those extracted uh, piece of content instead of ingesting the entire document. 
All right, so we're gonna pick uh, the data set here we just created. So that's gonna be uh, the uh, Vets Guardian uh, data set. Here we go. And now we're gonna click Submit. All right, so as you can see here, uh, it extracted the text from the PDF and I can just uh, click Submit here. All right, so here you can see the different chunks. Uh, the system definitely worked and added the metadata and cut the document into uh, here four different chunks. And so now the system is asking you, do you want to train this into the Vet Guardian uh, data set? Again, in this case, what you uh, can do is if you if you want to ingest the entirety of the document, you can just do slash yes. And so that's going to be the first step. So here it just trained the content and the four different chunks into the data set. So now we have the full version of the document inside the data set. The next step is it's asking you if you want to summarize the content and we recommend that because we find that it's going to be better at answering broader questions and you can even do uh, iterative summarization. For example, if you had a book that's 2000 pages and you have you know 20 chapters, you can do a summary of each chapter and then do a summary of the summary of the chapters to get a summary of the book. And now you have a, uh, effectively the entire book summarized and that's great to be able to answer broader questions but also very precise questions by uh, ing ingesting also the entirety of the book as well so let's do the summarization so we just say slash yes and it's going to start the summarization that takes a little bit more time because this is effectively doing queries using the model so if you pick gpt 3.5 it's going to take uh, pretty smaller chunks but if you go gpt 4 gpt 4 to 2 k uh, it's going to uh, effectively take more and more uh, of the text to turn into less number of summaries so so sometimes it's beneficial to have a, a broader summary and so pick the right model based on what you're trying to do if you want to if you want to have a large context window and do a summary of that you can effectively use uh, GPT-4, uh, 32K, or GPT-3, 16K. All right, so now the system gave us the summaries. We have summary one here, and then uh, summary two, three, all the way to four. And uh, that's the number four is the aggregate summary of the entire document. So it effectively did three summaries, and then the last summary is the aggregate summary of the component text into one uh, little chunks here. Sometimes it would tell you, hey, this is too big, for uh, the model and you would have to use GPT-4, 32K and you have to do that by hand because we don't want you to spend a bunch of tokens. So uh, we give you the options to, to do that as a follow-up uh, training. So here I just have to do slash yes and uh, train this uh, summarized content into the data set. That's done. So now it's also asking me, hey, do you want to do iterative and further summarize the the content? We don't have to do this here because it's pretty short. Uh, so we, we are fitting it into one uh, training set at the end. So that's good. We don't have to do that. So we do slash cancel. All right. So now it is canceled and uh, we have trained uh, the data set with our content. So now we can start asking questions and see how it does. So for example, uh, we looked at the document uh, before and we saw that uh, um, medical records, uh, uh, they have a, a backlog of three years. So let's try to, to ask that question. Um, how many years is the backlog of uh, medical uh, records? And this is correct. Um, we do have the three year backlog and the reference. As you can see, it's not a black box. We always show and it's three year and that's correct. All right, so now let's clear the chat and ask the next question, uh, which was uh, how many hours does each record take on average um, of manual processing? Eight to 14 hours, that's correct as well. All right, so now let's try to ask another question. We could say, uh, uh, how many new hires would would it have required to uh, tackle the backlog? 15 new hires, that's correct. That's also in the training data. So as you can see, in seconds, you can ingest uh, PDFs. Of course, you can also do a zip file and do a bunch of PDFs at the same time. If you want to save time, you can also use our API to do that ingest as well. So a couple of options, again, 
very easy you want to make sure of course your data is of quality if you find your PDF to be not great what you could do is summarize it extract it and use different pump engineering techniques using our summary uh, content plugin to extract information first clean that and then ingest the clean data uh, the more uh, the data is clean the better you're gonna get uh, answers uh, for those questions so it's worth taking some time and always do a summarization to make sure that uh, the bot has a complete understanding of the entire context of the document as well. Of course, if you start adding a lot of documents in the same data set, that could be confusing. Never forget to limit your queries to the right data set. If you do all, they might be overwhelming and too much data and it might not bring the right uh, context and resources. So you wanna limit your queries to the data sets that you are querying uh, when you do your query as well. Now, if you wanted to see what's inside a data set, you know, we've built this uh, search data set plugin. And so I could say, uh, show me, uh, show me all results from the data set that's guardian. And so this is turning uh, my prompt into a GraphQL query and it's going to run it. And we can see all the results here that can help me uh, delete it. I could also ask something uh, more complex. Um, and, and do uh, if it's very long you could you could say and uh, mentioning a backlog so let's let's do that for example I, I, I'm gonna say um, uh, and uh, mentioning mentioning backlog so here it's gonna create a new query so we have the word backlog now and there's less results because not every uh, piece was uh, mentioning the word backlog and so that worked uh, perfectly so that's a way for you to narrow down your results and then you could do a follow-up you know saying something like um, you know summarize the content listed above as a follow-up question uh, or something like that you could also use the idea here to delete it so if I wanted to delete uh, this uh, this result here I would just do uh, copy and paste the ID and do a slash delete and that would remove it from the data set. I can also do um, delete dash data set uh, vets guardian and that would delete the entire data set with all the data inside of it as well. Now we have also a feature to assign a read only access to your data set. You do slash assign dash data set with the name of the data set and then uh, the email you want to assign it to. So that would look something like this vets guardian um, and then I would do uh, uh, vets guardian and I will do an email here uh, and I would be able to assign this data set to somebody else it have to be the email has to be in the same uh, domain organization of your team always remember to clear the chat if you have too much data it's, it might be confusing uh, so self fresh your new chat do your your search data set first maybe or do a questions again your question if you don't have the right keywords to be able to pull the right results it's not going to be able to answer the question right uh, so if you just say summarize the content and nothing else and you just put the data set it's not going to work because it doesn't know which results to pick from the data set there's no context there but if you were to do first uh, a search data set so if i show you this if i if i just do summarize the content and I do nothing there is no context I just select the, the data set it's not gonna know which results to pull from the data it's gonna pick random results right and it's not gonna do a good job at summarizing the entirety of the data set that's not gonna work so it might do some some results randomly and you may get lucky but that's not the way to do it so the way to do it you what you could do is uh, you could uh, first uh, select the results from your data set by doing a query into your data set, which is what I'm doing now. I get all the results. Okay, so now I have the results. So now if I do, you know, uh, summarize the content, uh, that will then use that to create the summary and it's gonna be the holistic view. And of course, you know, if, if the the model you're using as a small context window like GPT-3.5, it might not take the entirety of the content. So make sure you swap to the right model. Uh, you could do uh, 3.5.16K, 4.32K to get more token window and watch our video on, on token window if you don't know how that works that's also super important as well there you have it 
within seconds, you can ingest your enterprise data securely with zero trust, label-based access control, and be able to assign it to your team members and create a chatbot or create a capability where your team can now query the data, get insights. And of course, we can also tap into databases and APIs automatically. That's using our real-time connectors. That's different from being a training, from training the bot a stuck in time. And so check that other video as well. And if you have any questions, uh, come join us on Discord. The link is here. And then also send us an email at uh, uh, sales at assage.ai if you have any questions.